okay then so hello guys uh, let's start this uh, event today so those of you who are new uh, i welcome you uh, for the first event that we are conducting as part of the uh, code academy jay chapter those who have already come welcome back so generally when we you know start our event at uh, code academy jay chapter we uh, we have some uh, quick introductions about ourselves right so let me introduce myself first i am ashwin bharat the chapter lead for uh, jay chapter and uh, I'm a web developer. I'm a blogger, and uh, I'm also uh, a finally undergraduate student from Bangalore, India. So let's get to know each other, right? Using a small uh, fun activity. Okay. So I would like to introduce, uh, you know, introduce yourself in this format. Uh, like, what your name? What are your interests? And what are your skills? Can either use your mic or the chat, and let's see so uh one of our you know uh members who have joined recently is uh, yarden tal he is from israel i am if i am right if my memory is right so he has attended the previous uh, dom manipulation event as well so i welcome you back yarden and the we have new comers deepak and akshat if you want to introduce yourself you can use your chat section or your mic also Hello, Grish. Yeah, bro. Hello. Hello. So. you are just uh, starting uh, right now so if you can introduce yourself it would be great uh, right can you set my mic as well okay so akshat kumar is from uh, jain university bangalore only great and okay you love to play in areas of ml and front end recently started blogging that's great so we have another blogger over here great so those of uh, those of you who have joined uh, recently uh, we have just started out you can uh, you introduce yourself in this format your name your interest your skills right so let's see okay deepak is an aspiring developer working on a project currently using react js that's great let's go to react js is actually currently the popular uh, front end library used by a lot of uh, companies right a lot of developers and even i'm uh, working on a project a finally project actually using react js that's great cool cool so let's uh, proceed with uh, you know what uh, javascript roadmap uh, was till now so basically what i did uh, what we did in uh, code academy jay chapter is we covered uh, the basics and dom manipulation as part of a roadmap so that uh, you know uh, i can demystify what is javascript right so today i'll be uh, going back a little bit you know uh, previously what we covered in uh, javascript you know the basics uh, but till now right so before i uh, you know st- uh, starting this javascript uh, ecma script event actually uh, it's better to go back and see why uh, we are learning this specific concept right so uh, when we try to see what is the scope of javascript right the scope is this uh, that javascript is the language of the web right? so most of you who are attending like this right now you might be already familiar with uh, you know uh, we need javascript to even to create a front end website right so javascript is also, is also now the most popular language as well uh, in the entire world uh, used by millions and millions of people right so what ha- what happens is when we have a large community like this like whenever whenever you have 
a really good number of developers we can uh, we get a lot of uh, technologies from this ecosystem right so uh, one of uh, these where uh, we, we can point out is the ability to build user interfaces even uh, deep back from our mem- uh, people who are attending this event right now right you are uh, currently building react js website so you might be uh, already familiar with how uh, easy it is to build user interfaces very uh, similar to how facebook is using right as react js react js is a open source library created by facebook we can uh, create really good uh, user inter- uh, re- interfaces which is very similar to what facebook is is using right now right and uh, as well uh, angular is also created by google and views another uh, cre- created by another open source developer actually so as you can see like uh, we have come a, l- a long way uh, since the beginning of uh, you know uh, since the origin of javascript we can say we can we can also build uh, uh, servers and rest apis using node js node js actually a runtime right uh, which is uh, used by a lot of developers at the back end so that whenever uh, developers who are using uh, javascript right with both front end and back end for them the language uh, the use of language becomes more and more easy uh, so that uh, you know uh, because previously we use we used to have java python and c++ and lot of other languages uh, specifically for back end right but nowadays we can actually use one language for both front end and back end which uh, gives a, a really good you know uh, usability for our developers as a developers right and we can also uh, build uh, mobile applications actually using a uh, library called react native so it is very similar to react js library only so when we learn react js it's very easy to uh, learn react uh, native as well which is the library used for mobile application development so as you can see the power of javascript right it keeps on growing and growing right we can also build uh, desktop applications using electron so most of you might have already come across uh, some really popular uh, desktop applications right for example if you take uh, slack or if you take uh, atom code editor most of these current uh, new desktop applications are actually built with electron js only so why because when when there are a lot of developers working on the commu- uh, community right uh, for this uh, companies as well they prefer uh, which is more easy to them right so that's the power we get with javascript we can also build uh, robotics and you know uh, dive into the iot platform using a library called johnnyfy so it is very popular you can visit this website as well in the future to know more so this is the you know essence of javascript right it is everywhere you can use it on any uh, device that we are that we are actually using in our day to day life right now right so this is what we were as well covering in uh, the first event the javascript basics right so why we, why i brought you back to this uh, concept is to understand the history of javascript okay so what happened uh, in the history is uh, javascript was actually created by a bunch of developers who are uh, you know working on a, a browser called mosaic okay so it was the first browser uh, who who introduced javascript in their uh, you know uh, browser software actually so after that what happened was every other uh, you know uh, every other uh, company like uh, microsoft uh, google and they they all started to create their own versions of javascript and their own own versions of uh, browsers as well so what happened was uh, everyone couldn't kind of uh, you know uh, follow us uh, same language because each of them had their own versions right so this created a lot of uh, war between each other right so what happened was uh, j- uh, javascript community came up with a standard called ecmascript right so ecmascript and javascript these days are actually used interchangeably interchangeably uh, this is uh, this is the actual reason because uh, ecmascript act- is actually standard right now which is actually uh, you know kind of adopted by a lot of uh, browsers right now okay so that's why we, uh, today we are going to kind of cover what are the new features and uh, you know how we came till now right now right so let me sh- show you a quick uh, medium blog post okay this is a really interesting right i will also share it in the description okay 
so just a second so as you can see uh it must uh in the beginning was actually trademarked by oracle and right now uh we started calling it script and javascript interchangeably as you can see so uh, this ECMAScript is actually built, implemented by Mozilla, right? So, uh, whatever the Mozilla uh, Firefox, uh, the, browse, the browser, right? So, actually, the t the original team who worked on the first browser called Mosaic, right? They are uh, they are the one who are currently working on Mozilla right now. That that browser is actually renamed as Mozilla right now. So that's why uh, Mozilla Firefox uh, kind of browser is actually quite popular with among the developer community because it is an open source browser uh, used by a lot of uh, developers as well, right? So let me show you uh, what we what you can see in this uh, blog post is that there are a lot of numbers, right? There is ECMAScript one, two, three, four. These are nothing but versions of JavaScript uh, which came in years and. The community what they did was they plan to roll out every uh, year a new new feature so it was ecmascript 5 as you can see it is ecmascript 5 and ecmascript 6 which is uh, which has brought a lot of uh, new new features into javascript which is uh, at this point very similar to any language like python or java that we use uh, in our uh, other software development field itself right so as you can see the current uh, browsers are supporting only up to ES5. So ES5 is nothing but ECMA, ECMAScript 5. Okay. So, uh, so whenever we try to write ECMAScript 6, there is a small, uh, you know, abstraction layer that we have to use where we should co uh, convert our ECMAScript 6 to 5. Okay. So that's where uh, we use a compiler called Babel. Babel. Okay. So you can uh, check out later as well. And today, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, explore what are these new uh, ECMAScript 6 features that we had in a, uh, have in our JavaScript, uh, you know, language as well, okay? So, let me share my screen again, right? Okay, so previously, uh, what we covered in JavaScript basics were the variables, what are data types, control flow, operators and functions as well, right? So right now, uh, what we are going to do is, we are going to see like, uh, as we were reading out, these are all the new uh, important features that you can use in your uh, projects. And you might have even uh, encountered this kind of code in your uh, uh, project as well, whenever you are you know, learning more about JavaScript. So uh, let me show you uh, each and every new feature one by one, okay? so. The first uh, one I'm going to show you is uh, key, uh, two keywords called uh, const and let. Okay, let me increase the. Let me increase the size size of the font just a second. So it's visible. Okay. Cool. So I'm currently using a you know online uh, editor called Repel, it so Repel it. So you can uh, let me share in the chat as well. If you want to follow along, you can uh, you can just uh, sign in with your current existing uh, you know accounts like uh, Google or GitHub. So first, we are going to see what is constant let. Okay. So previously, what we had before uh, ECMAScript six is that you are using a uh, you know a keyword called var. Var stand stands for variable and uh, generally uh, when we are you know trying to do uh, sorry when we are trying to declare any variable called x and assign a value this is how we used to do this right this is how we used to do so if we, if i try to console.log the value of x so let me command the new code just a second right so if i try to console.log what we get is the value of 12 right As you can see, yeah, we got the value told, right? So this is what we used to do uh, previously in JavaScript. One small change uh, that we got in ES6 is that we can use two uh, keywords called constant let, okay? So 
I have given a small example over here. Okay, so consider you know a small game that we are trying to create. Okay, and let's say we are having uh, three uh, variables called player, experience, and wizard level, and we are using this to uh, create some logic in our game that you are going to build. Okay, so just assume that we are going to do this. Okay, so uh, whenever we are trying to kind of uh, you know uh, compare the experience if it is greater than ninety. So we can say uh, the current player is at wizard level. Okay. Otherwise, let's say uh, he is not. We'll be giving false. Okay. So what happens is uh, once we, you know, uh, when we use const variable, const stands for constant. Okay. So once you assign any value to this variable const, we cannot change it. Okay. So uh, I'll come back to that later as well. Okay. And other another uh, keyword that we have is let. Okay. So let. Is similar to where, uh, okay. So what we can do is we can have have uh, you know use the uh, use this to create a variable. We can change the value if uh, it is hundred right here. If we try to change the value inside over here, we can also change it. But if we try to do this with cons, it won't allow. Okay. So okay, let me run it. If we uncomment uh, the previous code and let me run this code. So. What you can see is that when we try to consult a log, right? So you might have seen something interesting, right? So here, what we did, we uh, assigned false to the wizard level outside this if if else if statement, right? So what I'm doing inside this uh, if statement is that I'm creating another wizard level variable with a value true, okay? So and when when I consult dot log value true is uh, you know logged over here which is inside the if loop sorry if condition but when i try to console log outside it is giving us false right why uh, this happens is we are creating a local variable inside if statement okay we are creating a local variable so and uh, this wh what happens is this kind of uh, you know overrides uh, this uh, you know uh, variables such that we only have wizard level inside this if block condition okay so whenever we go out of this braces what happens is we will uh, we will start using this wizard level variable again okay so if i for your for for your understanding if i remove this let keyword right and let me run it again so what happens is this time the change that we do inside if uh, block becomes permanent right so we will get true at both the places as you can see, we got true both the places. But whenever we are trying to create something inside this if block, we will get uh, we will create something called a scope, right? So the scope of this variable when we give let and when we use it inside this, the scope of uh, this wizard level is local. But this this wizard level becomes global, right? So that's why uh, that's why the uh, the previous output was true and false. Okay, so. If I try to do something like const, right? If let let's say I'm uh, changing this uh, wizard level to const, and if I try to uh, you know kind of uh, let me remove this as well. If I try to change the value of a wiz uh, wizard level, which is actually a constant const, we will get an error. Why? Because uh, const is actually used to create fixed values. It cannot be changed in the future, right? So that's the difference between const and let. These are the new features that we had, you know, uh, in X, in X, Xmascript six ES six. Okay. So the next feature, what we are going to see is that uh, that's going to be uh, destructuring. Okay. So let me uh, get you get a code snippet. Okay. So let me push this code down. I comment and push it down okay so now uh, let me show you uh, a concept called destructuring okay so destructuring what it does is that uh, if you consider this example object, okay, I created an object. Uh, 
we are get uh, we are using that same analogy right uh, again where you are storing all of these variables inside an object right so this becomes more accessible right we can each time when you want to use it we can kind of use it like this right object dot player so this is how we access this value of player's name right so what you can see is that previously we used to do this what what we used to do was uh, we kind of uh, uh, needed to access each and every uh, val key value pair that we have using object dot object dot object dot so this becomes very very tedious right so in this new uh, ECMAScript feature what we received with this instead of uh, uh, having this like uh, you know assigning this value separately what you can do in the bottom as you can see we can kind of uh, assign the value directly using this uh, curly braces inside which you are going to give player an experience okay so let me comment this code and let me show you prove it to kind of what what are the values of player right so let me show you what are the pla player experience and we start learning. okay so let me console dot log this for you right and if i try to run this uh, what happens is uh, we directly got the value bob 100 false can you see this the player got directly assigned the value of player instead of giving it as object dot player right so what happens in behind the screen is that this object is uh, kind of represented this way right it is represented using curly braces with a key value pair kind of uh, syntax right so when we try to destructure when we try to use the con use the concept of destructuring right uh, and whenever i'm giving this player and experience right so when i'm giving the exact uh, words uh, that we used previously in this object inside this curly braces the values got directly uh, assigned to this uh, variables player experience as well as wizard level so that's why uh, you know even if i'm giving two variables in this const uh, declaration right i got uh, the value of two and again when i'm separately getting this uh, third value i'm getting the value false right so the order doesn't matter you can uh, assign a destructure in any order that you want the only uh, thing that you have to focus is that you have to use the same uh, variable name previously used for destructuring okay so this is how we can do it right and uh, by the way uh, if you can see this console.log i used uh, commas to separate each and every value right so whenever we are trying to console.log different uh, multiple uh, variables what happens is that uh, behind the screen our uh, output is displayed with the space okay so by default what uh, what it what console.log does is it will separate our values with space spaces in between okay so this was uh, the entire concept uh, behind, you know, uh, what was uh, destructuring and, you know, uh, Xmax thread. So till now, do anyone have any doubts about the new syntax? Anybody, anyone? All right okay great great so now uh, what you are going to see is that we are going to see another concept called template strings okay so generally when you are trying to you know uh, log anything in the output in javascript right so what happens is we will be uh, using a concept called string concatenation through which we can actually uh, you know kind of uh, we also see another example like whatever we are using in this previous example right we are separating with this by comma in behind the screens these uh, values are converted into string and they are concatenated only with the separator called uh, separator space right so that's what happens behind the screen so if i try to you know kind of uh, prove it to you what happens is that if we try to give uh, comma instead of uh, you know this addition uh, symbol so this is what happens when we pass the values using comma right so we try to see the output let me uh, show you like 
and I try to do both of these things will the output match right so as you can see the output is matching right so this is how uh, console.log uh, you know intelligently kind of gets the uh, you know variable names and kind of displays it properly okay so let's say let's say I want to uh, you know kind of uh, give give this output more description right i don't like what is i don't know what is sally what is 34 and what is ours right and let's say i want to do something like this so let me come on this let's say i want to do something like this is the value of name and let me kind of say and this is the value of age age is equal to the variable name age right so this is wha what we previously used to do in JavaScript. We were kind of giving, uh, you know, concatenating each and everything. With this is age, this is uh, the value of name, this is the value of pet. So if you try to, you know, show you the output. Previously, this is what we were used to do. Okay. So this is very uh, tedious right but let's say we have uh, hundreds and thousands of variable names and let's say you want to output something like this this becomes super super complicated right we have to keep on typing everything each by hand right so instead of doing this what we can do is we can use a concept called template strings okay so this was also introduced in ECMAScript version 6 okay so instead of doing this what I can do is I can I use a, you know, a, instead of quotation marks, what I'll be using, I'll be using template strings, okay, to wrap around each and every feature that I have in JavaScript, okay. So, so this template strings, you can find the, you know, this uh, keyword above the tab that you have in your keyboard, okay. So using template strings, what I can do is, I can kind of get this output pretty simply but in a pretty simple way okay so let me uh, show you the syntax so whenever you want to you know kind of uh, output the variable you have to use a uh, syntax something like this okay so you'll be using a dollar sign followed by two curly braces okay so but uh, and whatever is inside this template string so it will be output uh, it will be given as the output as it is just like how we were giving the quotation marks right so this uh, back ticks also uh, work in a similar fashion only the only difference is whatever we are giving inside this uh, new syntax right with the dollar symbol as well as curly braces so this is like this is where our variable uh, variables go in okay so let me uh, uh, you know show you the final output how this will look like okay just a second so the code that we have previously right we had to give plus symbol each and every time so in order to avoid this tedious process we can do something like this okay and to, to prove it to you let me uncomment the previous uh, code as well and run it and you will see the both of both of these outputs look absolutely the same okay as you can see this is how you can use template strings in javascript okay so this is a very useful uh, feature that we have okay cool so the next feature we'll be uh, seeing is something called arrow functions okay so this is going to be very exciting right so previously if uh, i have to you know get you back to the basics this is how we, we used to declare uh, javascript functions right if you can remember we, yeah so we were uh, trying using the keyword function and let's say i want to add a sum of two numbers i'll be getting those variables in the form of arguments and i'll be kind of printing it like this right let's say i'm returning it returning a plus b so this is how we uh, generally we used to do uh, you know create functions using normal javascript right before ecmascript uh, new features came so let's say i give the uh, some function 10 and 20 so 
and I'm logging the uh, output as well using this return statement and as you can see the, the code we will get it will be totally 30 right so as you can see the output will be 30 right so instead of doing all this what we can do is we can kind of create a, a really uh, elegant code that we have in uh, javascript okay so which is uh, called as arrow functions okay so in the arrow functions what we do is we kind of assign the function to a variable itself previously it was also available previously also we can use functions as if it is a value only we can pass it in different different functions as well but now what we can do is we can kind of create a function like this where we'll be passing the arguments at the beginning using this brackets and i'll be using this arrow okay so this arrow will be pointing to this uh, you know whatever we are going to give the logic right so instead of uh, you know putting that in one line we can simply say i want to return a plus b okay so if i try to run this okay so let me call this as some let me uncomment this okay so that you can see this happening okay so let me put it before logging the output get a lot of errors today cool As you can see, they are, both of this works the same way. We got the answer, right? So this is how you can use uh, arrow functions in JavaScript. Okay, so this kind of gives you an elegant way of uh, reducing it to one line, right? So instead of giving this return statement, you can also uh, remove this as well. You can also remove this uh, uh, kind of and make it this one as well because whenever you want to return only a single thing, instead of uh, putting any logic, if you want to return directly, this is how you can do and if I uh, show you the output it will be looking almost the same only right so this is how in, you know uh, you can kind of reduce the complexity of the code with, from three lines to one line right so this is another new uh, great feature that you can try out right so moving on so this was functions and this was arrow functions so whatever the code i'm trying to you know uh, doing over here you can either code along or you can check out the uh, wrap up page after this you know the event landing page as well guys i'll i'll be also sharing the entire code uh, links and you know the presentations and all in you know the chapter page where you are you know kind of uh, registering right so let me go to the next snippet quickly great so next what we are going to see is we can see uh, what are the new features that we had in arrays okay so so let me uh, open up some new code okay so this is how we used to declare arrays in javascript right we will be using this bracket notation and we will be giving a collection of uh, values that we can store it in a variable right so what do we have in the new uh, you know new features from ECMAScript 6 is that we can use a concept called for each okay so as you can see this uh, code snippet this for each what it does was it, it is actually using an arrow function that we recently discussed right and what it does is uh, in this new uh, you know array called double it will kind of push push each and every uh, value multiplied by two okay so if i try to you know uh, console log it okay let me show you the output which was given by 4h so what you will get is you will get the same array multiplied by two so each and every value will be multiplied by 2 4 20 and 30 32 right so we'll be seeing that so this for each uh, th actually is actually the new feature that you got in es5 so this is 
very similar very similar to something that we used used to do using a uh, general for loop so generally we, we had this for loop right let i equal to 0 and i less than let's say array dot length and i plus plus so generally we used to do this big uh, you know uh, syntax and we were trying to do the same task like this right so this was the code that we had a code ability that we had previously and now what we can do with the arrow functions as for for each this both of the both of these codes uh, code do the same thing only okay so the new advantage is that we can kind of uh, as you can see you can kind of reduce it to one line as well right the code becomes more and more readable as well right so you can see just a second can kind of show it in a one line code which will also will be easy to understand as well right so this is the a uh, new uh, feature that we have that we can apply to arrays as well okay the array and let me show you three other important functions that we can use which was recently introduced by you know uh, using xmask script okay so this new feature uh, that we have okay these new functions these are nothing but uh, called pure functions okay so i have the code snippet ready for you so what is pure functions for you if i can say so this this is something that we have in functional programming concept so generally a pure function is that so let's say we have a function called dx right let me let me show you neatly right okay so let me uh, let us say I have a function x right so whenever I'm passing uh, this function let me show you a neat arrow function itself let's say I have a function called func let's say I'm passing it a value x right so when I am I'm passing this value the output should be always uh, you know predictable okay so it, it should be either uh, a particular value a or it should be a particular value p so that's what a pure function does okay the output should be always predictable that is a number one property okay it should be same at all times or calls was that's how we can say it is uh, easy to do development itself right so whenever we know what is going to come it will become uh, easy and easier for us to develop good software right so another feature that pure functions that is this is it does not it does not affect the outside world okay what i mean by that what i mean by outside world is that so whenever i'm trying to do console.rag right i'm doing it outside the functions itself whatever we i'm doing over here i'm doing outside the function right so that's what uh, you know uh, the second this one means so we shouldn't have this is also uh, known as uh, side effects okay so whenever you are trying to kind of console.log or whenever you are trying to even change the values of let's say array over here right we are changing the value of uh, here we are creating a new array but let's say you are changing the value of current array itself that's a side effect because we are kind of uh, changing whatever uh, is present outside this uh, world of, of let's say this for each function or you know this new function that we have so in javascript we have some uh, pre-built uh, you know three functions present through this ECMAScript feature okay so these are nothing but map filter and radius okay let us see one by one what each what each of this uh, functions does so map is nothing but uh, map is a function which will uh, accept a function okay so here we can we are as you can see in each of in every pure function we are passing a yaru function itself so that's how uh, you know we can improve your code ability as well so as you can see the map function what it does is it kind of do the same thing what the function that we are using previously in this for each right so whenever whatever you are giving uh, the function let's say i'm passing this function right this function arrow function where i'm giving the number and i'm multiplying it by two so whenever you pass a function like this what map does is it will create a new uh, struct data structure uh, here in this case we are creating an array map array okay in which the in the values will be populated 
uh, with the previous you know uh, the previous uh, array that we are applying the function right so we are applying this function using this dot uh, dot operator and we are uh, kind of passing this function to map each and every value associated with uh, the multiple multiple of 2 right so if i try to run this code if i try to run this code so you can see th both of this for each and double answers will be the same right so as you can see the output are same so this is how you can use map in uh, uh, javascript to reduce even this line of code this line of code is now reduced to this right so this is how you can use map on top of arrays that we have in javascript right so the next one that you are going to do is filter okay so filter what it does is uh, it is also accepting a function a arrow function as you can see you can also pass a normal function also so this arrow function what it does uh, it is checking th whether the number is greater than 5 okay based on the uh, value this will be either returning true or false right whenever you give an expression which is checking the uh, you know given value like this it will give true or false so we should uh, always pass a function which uh, either returns a boolean value right either true or false a boolean value and based on that boolean value this filter function what it does it will filter the uh, array that we are applying on in this array we are using this filter function sorry we are applying on top of it and we are filtering whichever numbers are which are greater than 5 here it is 20 32 right and we'll that that values will be directly populated in this filter array variable okay if i try to run this again the output that you will see on the you know right side is 10 and 16 that's because we filtered it right we filtered it using this uh, kind of you know this one okay let me take a new example i give you more clarity let's say i'm having array 2 okay and let's say i have values 1 2 3 4 5 6 you know just as uh, few basic numbers and let's say i'm applying on top of this and let's say i want to have only the odd numbers present in this okay so if i want to filter that out i'll be checking whether the modulo when we divide it by 2 is not equal to 0 that will be an odd number right whenever the whenever we try to divide this numbers and whenever we get the reminder as uh, something which is other than 0 that those numbers are considered as odd number right so if we try to uh, fill okay, the output you know normally we, what we will get is 1 3 and 5 okay so let me run it so this is how you can use filter in javascript to kind of as you can see it is 1 3 and 5 right so this is how you can use filter to kind of reduce reduce our uh, uh, sorry we can kind of filter out whatever the values we have very quickly using this arrow function and this uh, you know new this new feature so moving on uh, what we can now say is uh, another fun uh, pure function called reduce okay so these three functions what you are using we are actually applying it on top of uh, the array data structure only right so whatever i displayed over here array we are applying on top of that this uh, this one actually so it is uh, coming along with the array data structure itself okay so this reduce uh, function what it does is it will accept two parameters actually whatever the function that you are passing plus another uh, value called uh, you know on which it will be reduced okay so let me explain it bit by bit so what happens is there are two uh, variables called accumulator and number so acc stands for accumulator so and this number okay so what it does is whenever this function is running right whenever this function is running so first of all uh, what it will do at the beginning step it will kind of add this uh, the second parameter 0 plus the array that we have let me bring that array down okay let me comment it on top over here let me bring this array down so it's visible for you okay so in this array we have uh, 1 2 10 6 right 16 right so using reduce what we can do is we can uh, kind of add everything in uh, in a single go uh, using accumulator and number okay so what it does is the initial value 0 is added along with the first pass of this function okay this pass function actually will be running four times for each and every value just like how it was you know performing its function previously right with the map and filter also each and every time it is checking for each and every value and giving us a 
output right so this is how reduce also works the only difference is that uh, we are kind of uh, if I try to show you the output you will kind of get the idea of what actually happens okay so so what happens is whenever we uh, the it is encountering just uh, okay okay get an error check it mm, let me try to put it for ra2 okay so we command it above actually we are using the array over here as well that's why we have the errors propping up reference error so whenever you try to you know kind of use the variables before initialization itself we will get a reference error in javascript so we have to be careful with that so anyone have any doubts so someone was unmuting right okay cool so let me run it again i have uh, fixed that issue So as you can see, the value over here is kind of uh, given as 21. So this 21 is nothing but the addition, uh, no, sum of all of these values that we have provided over here. Okay, so what happens is uh, each and every time we are applying this function, right, in this uh, particular value for each and every value in array 2 So it will kind of, uh, what it will do, in, uh, it will use 0 along with this each and every number, it will reduce it to one single element okay so let me uh, give you more idea using console.log over here whenever you want to kind of understand what uh, what is going on inside a function you can do something like console.log okay and uh, let's say i want the value of accumulator each and every time it runs and let's say i also want the value of uh, the number and uh, let me put it outside okay right okay so what it does if I try to run this again so each and every time uh, this function is executing right it's a values of accumulator and number so number is nothing but the number that is present in this array to only guys so each and every time as you can see one three four five six is nothing but this actual values present in this array to and the accumulator what what it does is whatever is given as the return statement right accumulator plus number so initially accumulator is actually assigned as 0 because we are passing the value 0 right if I try to give 1 over here in the beginning if you can see it is 0 right it will change to 1 actually so that's the second argument that we are passing okay so let me run it again and if you try to see the accumulator is 1 at the beginning right we can also so using this we can give any any let's say 100 we can give any specific uh, you know point that we want to start our uh, you know reduce function to kind of accumulate it okay so as you can see it is 100 and it is keep on adding everything and we get the value 121 right so this is how this reduce function also works so each and every time it will kind of go through the code and it go through the values and it will reduce it to one single element okay so each and every time this return statement this value is there right it is stored in the accumulator itself so accumulator at the beginning 100 plus 101 it will become 101 right that is stored in accumulator itself as you can see the next value is 101 so let me let me uh, show you uh, what other uh, things we can do instead of addition you can also do multiplication as well right so addition was just a small if i try to multiply it multiply sorry we will get a really big number at the end right we'll be keep on multiplying each and everything and i have a hundred as the beginning you will see a really big output at the very end right so as you can see the, the final value is 72,000 so this is how we can use reduce function to do even uh, complicated uh, you know mathematical functions so whatever you want to uh, give some logic right you can put this inside this reduce uh, you know for the first argument as the function uh, error function is there right you can put any type of logic and you can return that value so this is how the, th the three, uh, new, three new uh, pure function that we have on top of uh, array that we can use okay so we can try them out later as well 
I'll give this code files. Okay, so let me keep this fresh and let me give uh, bring out the new code snippet that we have. So before we move on, as of now, does anyone have any doubts about uh, till now we have covered the new uh, you know array functions that we can use we used a java arrow function template strings destructuring and let and const right so if you have any doubts you can ask them let's let's have a break for five minutes right uh, it is already we have hit around seven o'clock here in India, so if anyone have any doubts you can uh, post it as well so let us have a five minute break and let us come back uh, you know around 7 pm ist
right so i guess everyone is back after this break okay so let us move on with whatever the new features that we that is present in es6 right till now we have covered what is arrows arrows function template strings t structuring and let and const as well and we saw what how we can use map reduce as well as uh you know uh, filter functions in rs right so there are other uh, concept uh, in es6 as well which are which i have listed over here these are like the popular ones uh, that you will be using even in your development uh, software development for you know front end and back end uh, using javascript okay so i'll be showing you more of that so let me go back to this uh, repl online editor okay so let me show you the new concepts that we can use i right, just a second Okay, so I'll be sharing a repository actually uh, for you to explore in the future as well. So let me put it in the chat. So whatever the new features that we are discussing, right? There are uh, even mo more more uh, tons of it that you can see in the you know in the future as well. And I'll be uh, showing the most important ones only because of the time constraint. Okay. so if you can see uh, you know i'll be sharing this repository where every ecmascript feature is kind of given with examples right so you can see there is uh, arrow functions classes and all were actually introduced in javascript in es6 only so these are the concept that is present in you know uh, normal programming languages like c c++ that we have python and java itself but it took it took some time in javascript to be implemented as you can see we have template strings restructuring we can also do destructuring for uh, you know arrays as well as you can see this is how they we can do it they have mentioned that and uh, there's a new feature in functions that you can use which is default arguments as you can see this uh, two arguments x and y is there right so instead of passing just uh, uh, two values we can only pass one value and we also can get the output when we are giving the default arguments right y is 12 uh, if not passed right so whenever you don't pass in any new value for this function will actually get the output as 15 so as you can see this uh, expression right so this will actually give the value as true so this is what you can uh, explore in the future and this is called as a spread operator okay this three dots followed by an uh, variable name okay so what it does is anything extra that you put inside this function uh, you know while you are calling this function all of this will be stored in an array uh, with the variable name y okay so that's why uh, you know when we are passing 3 and the rest of the values are stored in r y right so this what they are returning is nothing but the length of this array the length of this array will be 2 if both of these are passed uh, and stored as array right so this also will uh, give us give the value as true so let me show you to you as well in this uh, let me show this a code example as well and let me console dot log directly right so i would also highly recommend to go through this uh, repository that you that is present over here right you can check it out so as you can see the values uh, again coming as true that's because this is actually st stored as array only right so if i try to console dot log let's say for more clarity let me console dot log the array inside the function itself you can pretty much clearly see the spread operator operator kind of spreads spreads the value that's why it's called spread right is kind of spreading the value uh, one by one in an array right so as you can see the array is given as output so this is how kind of uh, you can use the concepts and you can check it out later as well you can also use this for 
assigning uh, any value as well so latent cons is there iterators and generators is kind of advanced concepts but you can explore it later as well so if you guys are in may be interested we can also have another uh, event in our javascript roadmap covering some advanced concept as well so this is actually another new data structure called uh, map right so in other languages you might have uh, heard about hash maps hash tables so that key value pair also we can kind of create it using the new features as you can see we have proxies these are all new concepts you can check out later so i'll be uh, showing you something new over here okay so this is uh, called promises this this part you'll see a lot in uh, you know a building uh, you know during web development and building uh, software development right in uh, javascript so let me show you this particular code what it does the code editor okay so let me show you the concept okay so this is the code that we had right so before moving on let me show you what is timeout right so time set timeout is nothing but it is a function which will uh, accept two parameters resolve and duration so based on this resolve and duration what it does it will kind of uh, pause this uh, function or uh, this execution for particular amount of time okay it will kind of pause the execution pause means it will uh, what how do i say pause the execution it's uh, the execution won't happen until this duration is uh, satisfied in with respect to the timing okay so if i try to you know uh, let's say uh what they have given over here is timeout okay we try to run this let me run it think i think it's running properly okay so cool so let me show you set timeout properly i think there's a code example okay great so i have this uh, code example right let me bring it to top to un better understand what is set timeout first and what happens here right so we set timeout as you can see it is accepting a resolve resolve is nothing but the uh, another a function here we are passing an arrow function right which is console logging the output as first message second message and third message and we are passing the duration as well so in duration is actually passed as micro sorry milliseconds in javascript okay 5000 means i think what uh, 5000 milliseconds which stands for 5 seconds okay so if i try to run this code if i try to run this code for you so what happens is the output will come in this fashion actually uh, see as you can see it's loading for a long time right long time what it does is based on each and every uh, duration that we have as you can see it is coming one by one first third machine came then first message came then se sorry first third then second then first as you can see based on the duration it is kind of uh, pausing it for a second and coming up right so let me give it let's say i want to receive the first message uh for you know let's say after 2 seconds let's say i want to receive second message for 3 seconds and let's say i want the third message uh, as soon as possible okay let me change this order let's say and the output will be quite different right it will be the first will be it will be third message and then it will be first message and second message as you can see so this is how we can use set timeout and this is very useful because in javascript uh, whenever you want to you know whenever you have some functions which which has to uh, kind of call any back in apis and do some ca computation or get some data those kinds of thing can wait for some time and so that other part of the code can execute right so this is how we can take advantage of set timeout in javascript okay so uh, coming back to this uh, code snippet promises here the code snippet is uh, actually used to explain promises right so promise nothing but it's a uh, you know promise or li library for asynchronous programming just like what i was talking about whenever you have uh, uh, let's say you have 1000 lines of code okay which is which is a website which is loading your uh, let's say the game that we are talking about and whenever you are trying to load this right uh, let's say we have a slow internet connection first of all if we uh, try to lo uh, load a normal program it, the style one the javascript and style one be kind of uh, applied to it directly if you have 
visited few uh, websites right so some websites what it does is it kind of takes a lot of time to load every file and kind of execute it so in those cases in the what we can do we can uh, try something called asynchronous programming which basically states that let's say i have this 1000 lines of code right let's say this this is the big line of uh, lines of code and you can use this uh, asynchronous programming concept to run this function and run the next functions until this uh, until this runs we can also continue and move on to the next functions and all so that's how you can use uh, asynchronous programming and promises is actually one of uh, one of them which facilitates it in a way like it is a first class representation of value that may be uh, available in the future okay that's how we use promises in a lot of libraries and uh, over here as you can see they have created a simple promise which will accept resolve and reject two parameters called resolve and reject and, and uh, it is uh, using set timeout as the uh, return return value right and here what he is trying to do he is creating a variable p and he is assigning the timeout uh, promise to this one it will return a promise right it will return a promise with duration zero because we are giving a default argument so for every promise that we have we generally use dot then this is also another function so whenever this promise is uh, done right what uh, what should we do next that's what happens in dot then okay so uh, okay let me show you come back we come back and to better understand let me put it at the bottom and get this over here okay so uh instead of uh, returning anything let me console dot log as well as you can see we console dot log and let me try to kind of log that we are in the timeout 2000 right and uh, let's say i'm logging this one as well so uh, as you can see like whenever you want to uh, get get to understand something some part of sn code snippet you can use console.log to your advantage and kind of uh, you know inside this functions and all and you can check whenever we are visiting where we are visiting and when we are visiting all the all of this stuff right so let me see right and this is actually catching error so let me run this so what happens is we clear the previous output as you can see there are, there's a delay because we have given one second right and after that it is returning another uh, time out of two seconds and as you can see mm, this is actually the previous previous output right i am also running this code along with this code and the first part that which was running was timeout to 2000 right so this is actually a promise which is returned by this timeout function right whenever we call timeout function and give duration it is actually returning as a promise which is setting the timer to the past duration here it is one second right and we are passing it to one second and and uh, sorry this would be actually one second and we, we are returning a time timeout which is another promise and based on that promise we are again applying this dot then function so whenever there is a promise right whenever there is a promise that we are assigning to something right we have to use dot then so that we can apply something uh, once this promise is done so the promise is nothing but we, i'm i'm waiting for this function to happen once it does you do what is whatever it is uh, present in the dot then right so if you can see this code carefully output carefully i i, I used a promise over here right J sorry just a second and uh, here it, it this promise is actually uh, taking duration one and this is taking let's say duration 2 right okay it was like this before and I'm throwing an error over here catching that error as well so if you can see the execution properly what happens is you go along with this code this code will actually run uh, this code will wait and this code will run quickly and it will come back over here that's what promised us it will kind of a uh, promise for the timeout thousand is executed first and everything else is executed in the rest of the code and we are coming back and we are applying the dot then right we are applying the dot then and we are inside this uh, duration whatever you passed right this 
promise is again return and we are applying a uh, this dot then and we are throwing an error willingly and we are catching it using this dot catch so this is what uh, is known as chaining chaining in javascript it, we are chaining each and every uh, f functions on to on top of each other right so as as you saw the execution right so this is what uh, uh, we call as uh, asynchronous javascript asynchronous asynchronous programming in javascript okay and promise is nothing but uh, it is what it is what it is uh, literally uh, it is promising that uh, i will return something until then uh, you can go on and do the rest of the execution right so that's what happened in our code as well as i can see we have uh, set timeout three set timeouts after this as well which uh, went on and ran until this uh, next duration was waiting for 2000 seconds so it took extra time as well as you can see at first it is 1000 and 2000 but the entire execution over here is done by then itself right so that's how you can use uh, promises in javascript to kind of tell tell the program parts of the program to wait and uh, until until uh, some other ex execution is running and it is promising that okay i will give you a, a you know kind of output as well or else i will reject the output so this is what we are, either we resolve or we reject that's why we pass two functions actually right so yeah that's pretty much it about uh, you know the base the most important concepts that we wanted to cover actually right in next script so yeah so before we on, i would like to have some announcements from ju chapter right so we have a javascript channel in our uh, discord community okay there's a discord community for our channel and you can come there come over there and you can kind of discuss about uh you know your uh doubts and, and ideas anything that that you want to ask about let uh, about javascript later with me i'll be active in discord so let add the in invite link in the chat as well we can come and check out so we have a separate javascript channel so that we c i will be sharing every recording every resource that i get personally i have followed all of the details as well in this uh, javascript channel so make sure you join this uh, discord community and check it out let me show you the discord channel as well I'll just a second so deepak says thanks thank you uh, for you as well deepak for attending the event i hope you liked it uh, you are not yad and tar are the two people who's been constant till the very end i really appreciate your interest in you know javascript and ecmascript and all so you can go check out this discord community let me open it up so okay. uh, thank you ashwin so actually yes deepak uh, can, I'm there. can you come again you are lagging in between Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so, initially, thank you for the session. Um, uh, so, I was actually looking to join a local chapter here in Bangalore, but I, the first one that came out was Mumbai, I believe, and uh, okay. then later on we got this. I'm glad I'm here. Thank you so much. Okay. That's great. So, be, uh, be in touch as well. So, let me show you the uh, chapter community that we have. We have we have uh, actually conducted javascript front end marathon we conducted a lot of events till now i'll show you the chapter landing page as well sure any new event we are coming up you can get the alerts directly in your mail if you join our uh, event landing page at um, you know code academy let me show it in show it in the i'm sorry i don't know how i got disconnected it's okay so i have posted the link as well right so uh, first of all let me show you the discord community at first uh, you know there's a lot of channels that you can okay. visit and the first one, uh, that one i was talking about is the javascript channel so previously you know in this basics uh, event i covered you know uh, whatever the resources are there the ppt the you know code files i've added them in the github repository mm -hmm. the resources i have also shared a lot of cheat sheets provided by code academy platform itself 
those are for free you can check out the recordings as well and i'll, I'll okay. be very active here so yeah you can check that out and okay. uh, this is the yeah this is the uh, landing page of our chapter right so every month we'll be having a meet up at the very end, end of the month okay we'll be discussing about any new updates okay so, and anyone wants to you know join so as you can see we have actually uh, covered around eight events till now so each and every event you will be having recordings as well if you have missed it and uh, you know you can register for here for every event using, uh, using view details okay so and i also just i also wanted to share a challenge that you can uh, pursue if you are really interested in javascript okay so Sorry, can you please come again? Yeah, yeah, just a second. So there's a JavaScript challenge that you can pursue on Hacker Rank. So let me okay share okay. the tab. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I hope this one is visible, right. Yeah, so there's a hacker rank challenge uh, yeah, it is. on JavaScript, okay? It is uh, called 10 days of JavaScript, where you can kind of, whatever we discussed till now, right? Using ECMAScript, using JavaScript, you can kind of solve very basic uh, problems th that they will be giving in, in form of case studies. And, you know, it will be very useful to improve your skill as well. You will be getting a badge, you can showcase in your uh, coding, uh, this one. So, Check that out. In my so, portfolio, yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much about uh, today's event. That's a wrap up. So. Okay. I'll be putting uh, every you know uh, every uh, recordings, code files in the community landing page that I was discussing, so you can check.